What's up you guys, Forrest here with the Foco Flow Show. If you're new to the channel, we are a mountain bike focused channel based in Charlottesville, Virginia, where we ride trails all over the Virginia, North Carolina, Maryland area, as well as beyond the East Coast region. We also do bike reviews as well as gear reviews. And today is a very special day where it is new bike day for my son Forrest. So we have got the brand new 2024 Trek Top Fuel 8, the XT build, that we're gonna talk about what I like, what maybe I don't like, and give you an idea if this is the right bike for you or for your son who's looking to get out on the trail in a more competitive kind of way. Of course, if you're enjoying the content, make sure you like and subscribe and share it out with all your other riding buddies so we can all get out there and find that flow. So if you've been following along on the channel or following us on Instagram, there's a little bit of a backstory for how we got to a place where we were able to get the top fuel for my son, who's 11 years old, and just now planning to get into competitive racing in the fall. He'll be racing for the CRC, Charlottesville Racing Club, NECA team, which is an awesome organization right here in Charlottesville. So you guys remember the gray Ritmo, and then of course we upgraded to the green Ritmo V2S. So that's what I've been riding most recently. And I said in a few videos ago that I was going to try to sell that bike to use funds for uh, a different bike. Well, this is the bike that we had planned, but it took quite a bit of time. Right now here in 2024 might be the worst time of all time to sell a used bike. So it was on pink bike. I tried to sell it locally, did not have a whole lot of success. However, the local bike shop, Blue Ridge Cyclery, and their owner, Sean, does a velo swap every year where you can put uh, your gear up for sale and other folks can come and buy it and you get store credit for it. Try to actually sell the Ritmo there in uh, one of their uh, velo swaps here locally. And it wasn't until we put the bike up for sale uh, down in Richmond, Virginia at their shop down there that we were able to sell the bike. So we did not get nearly as much as we thought we were gonna get for it, but we did get some funds that came to store credit that I could utilize at Blue Ridge Cyclery to find the right bike for force. So after doing some research, we landed on the Trek Top Fuel, which is effectively not its full XC race bike. That would be, I believe it's called the Super Caliber, but it's also not the trail starting to get a little bit closer to Enduro category. That would be the Fuel EX. Forrest, my son, when we were in Moab together, rode the Fuel EX and absolutely loved it. But at this point, that is getting very close to more aggressive trail territory and then of course you have the trek slash that is its enduro bike for forest he loves to ride rocky technical things he loves to jump he also wants to race and be fast as much as possible so i was really looking for the bike that could really fit the bill so what we landed on was this trek top fuel which is sort of its uh i guess we'll call it down countries the category so it would be in the same category as my rebel ranger it's got 130 millimeters up front of front travel and 120 reel in a lighter frame. So what we'll do is we'll talk about uh, the build of the bike, talk about what I like about it so far, any dislikes, and give you the overall impression of the bike. So without further ado, let's get into it. So when we look at the Trek Top Fuel XT, it's XT8, you have a really, really competitive build for the price that you get. So again, this bike retails for about $4,000, which is expensive for a child's bike unless they are looking to ride or race competitively. And you've got uh, a slightly less expensive options in the top fuel, I believe it's the seven and the five, which have closer to entry level components. So what really drew me to this bike was the overall build kit. The standup is the RockShox Pike front fork. Of course, that's a really high end air fork. It's obviously not their Pike Ultimate or any of those top tier forks, but it is a very nice, reliable, bomb proof fork that feels really light, really smooth, very, very fantastic. And that pushed the travel to 130 instead of the normal 120 on the other top fuels. On the rear, we've got a RockShox Deluxe Ultimate, which is super smooth, adjustable. It's got a lockout switch if you need it. So the sp suspension is taken care of in a really, really nice way. And what really gets high marks for me is the rest of the build kit, where you've got a full XT 12-speed drivetrain. That's what I ride on my Ritmo right now. I'm a Shimano guy, and it's just a feel thing. Obviously, SRAM makes great drivetrain parts too. I just happen to think Shimano drives a little, shifts a little smoother, a little snappier than SRAM. I would not have not bought this if it had SRAM on it, but I really did like that as well. 
also has on it SLX brakes, which is what I have on my high-end rip mode. So we're really talking about a really uh, medium to high-end build for a competitive price, looking at those sort of higher-end to mid-tier bikes. The bike's an all-aluminum frame, so of course that's different than the carbon options that you can get that will make it lighter. This bike with pedals cro uh, clocks in around 34 pounds, which is by no means feather light. My full carbon Rebel Ranger comes in at about 28 pounds with pedals. So going carbon with carbon wheels could do that. We're not doing that for my 11-year-old's bike. Um, so it isn't a light bike, but it is a really well-built, really, really well-balanced frame that's still maneuverable and does not cause too much trouble for force on the bike moving around. You've got a lot of Bontrager specs for your wheels, your tires. I love the colorway of the whole bike, and including the tan sidewalls. Uh, Bontrager grips, Bontrager uh, bars. All the Bontrager stuff is good. It's just Trex House brand, so it's not like boutique or anything like that, but they're absolutely bomb-proof. So overall, really fair build, build kit. Again, we were able to actually get 25% off of the bike at the time during one of Trex sales. So it's really came down to about $3,000 for the full build that you got. Super awesome. Gives you everything that you need for a bike that's both trail capable as well as proficient for racing for those that are in the younger levels that are not trying to compete at the World Cup level. So talking about the things that I really like about the bike on the trail, uh, Forrest really felt comfortable climbing on the bike. Now this is a size medium and he's still just under five feet tall. So the bike is just a hair big for him right now. But honestly, like all 11 year olds, he's gonna outgrow it in the next year to year and a half and we'll hopefully be able to sell it and get uh, the next size up for him. So we purposely bought it a little bit big, even though he rode a size small. We were in Moab last year, he's growing like a weed. So he feels comfortable even though he's a hair stretched out on the bike, but the suspension tracks, even in rocky technical climbs, he was able to track the bike. The front end didn't wander at all. And as he uh, experienced the full 12 speed drivetrain, it shifted on command. Everything stayed tracking where it was supposed to, and it really climbed exactly the way he needed it to, even in those technical spots, even with a bike that's just a little bit too large for him. Again, overall, the best thing about this bike is its simplicity in terms of setup. It was easy to set up. Didn't have to mess with the suspension too much. We set the sag for his body weight, so super light, so he could use the travel that he needed. And then even with the sag and the suspension set fully wide open, he had no issue making it up those climbs that we were riding on together here in Charlottesville. And that just gets high marks for a bike that's nice, it's high end, it feels good, but doesn't require a whole lot of uh, additional movement on it to get it to dial in, especially for the type of bike that we want. In the uh, traverse and the flow sections, again, the simplicity and smoothness of the suspension really is the standout. Hard for me to say that this is um, uniquely different or better than a lot of the other bikes that I've ridden, again, but the way that the suspension sets up makes it super easy. Forrest felt it was very, very intuitive, but still efficient enough for everything that he needed to do on the bike as we went through those traversy sections and then transitioned down to uh, more steep downhill sections as well. As we got to some of the drops and jumps and some of the steep stuff that we rode there in Charlottesville, the bike tracked really, really nicely. Brakes were powerful. They transitioned from uh, rocks and tacks and chunk to quick pops and jumps and then into steep sections without any issues at all. Dropper post was quick, fast. So around what really is the takeaway that I like the most, it's just how balanced this bike is. Again, remember for an 11 year old who's less than 100 pounds, you don't need 150 to 160 millimeters of travel. So this 130 to 120 uh, really functioned well. And even when we got into some of the rocky technical parts that we were riding and then in the steeps, he was able to get behind the bike and move it around without any issues at all. So the bike really just gets super, super high marks for its performance in all three major categories. Again, it could be a little bit lighter, but we're talking about an aluminum bike. For what we need, it really does the job efficiently without any issues at all. The tread patterns, we've got the uh, XR4s on the front and the back. We're fine for what we need it, right? And it gives you the good balance of trail uh, knobs and durability and all of those things. Probably not your fastest racing tires if we wanted to go that route. Maybe you put something a little slicker on the reel for even less rolling resistance. But the majority of the riding at Forest and I do are going to be in that mixed use trail riding. We're probably even going to take it to the bike park. So really, really high marks. Really, really enjoy every piece of the uh, riding experience for Forest on the bike with very little negative to say. So in summary, 
The Trek Top Fuel 8, the XT build that we were able to get for Forrest, is a perfectly balanced trail riding bike with race capabilities. Of course, shout out to Blue Ridge Cyclery and Sean and Jip for being super cool about letting me try out some bikes and go back and forth on the right options for Forrest before we ordered this one and got it in. But again, if you're an adult and you're looking for a reasonably priced aluminum sort of down country bike, I would have no issue recommending this bike. If this bike were mine, I would ride the heck out of it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. Certainly happy to answer any questions that you have about my experience with this bike or other down country bikes. And if you have a favorite bike that you ride in this category, that 130, 120, 110 category, that's not a full XC bike, but not a full trail bike, comment below. Let me know what your favorites are so we can all get out there and find that flow.